Hey guys, how's it going, Companion here? So today at BlizzCon, they announced the new expansion, of course, but it's coming out in like five days. So I guess there's a lot of stuff to cover. They actually uh, released all the cards, so there's quite a bit of stuff to talk about. But before we get into that, there's a few like large-scale concepts that I want to talk about. So it is the League of Explorers. Uh, this expansion has, out of all the Hearthstone expansions, the least to do with World of Warcraft lore and that kind of stuff. And this is coming after TGT, which had the least up to that point. So it seems like Hearthstone is maybe going a little bit on its own road, which might be a good thing in one hand because, well, it doesn't really stifle how creative you can be with certain cards or what you want to release, that kind of stuff. But on the other hand, well, I really want some of the uh, World of Warcraft content in Hearthstone someday. I'm sure we'll get it. I understand they have to follow this model because, well, uh, Hearthstone just chews up all the World of Warcraft content much faster than World of Warcraft actually can pump it out. So that makes sense. Um, today, I just want to show you guys uh, a lot, all the cards and give you guys my just basically initial thoughts on each one. I'll do another video where I talk about the depth and all the real possibilities of every single card on the list. But today, I just want to give you guys an idea of what to expect from the expansion. Because it's coming out in like five days, I think just having a rough idea about what's going on is fairly important. Um, it was uh, the first boss or something was playable at BlizzCon. You basically had to survive like 10 turns and it was super easy. There was like a demo and the player played unbelievably bad and actually won anyway. So, uh, normal modes are still a joke, that's no surprise there, but it's really about the cards and the fun, and I think the fun will be there because of the adventure mode aspect, but, well, let's get into the cards. So, first up is Animated Armor. It is a mage-only card for mana for four, you're here can only take one damage at a time. To clarify, this basically means when you get hit for one damage, you get hit by one. If you get hit for two damage, you also get hit by one. If you get hit for like 10 damage, you still get hit by one. So this card is actually super powerful at preventing damage, but it's still a four mana, four, four. So it's not really particularly strong, but it does actually combat a lot of the combo decks out there that try to aim you to aim to kill you on one turn in a very big way. It does stop a lot of the aggressive decks because it has kind of like a taunt mechanic most of the time. So it, I think it's actually a pretty strong card. I think it will see play in some form or, or another. It's just it, the effect is so powerful in some situations that it'll basically guarantee to see play at some point. But you know, that point might not be immediately in the game as a lot of the aggressive decks do actually run like the, the two attack minions, the one attack minions, and just a lot of those. So yeah, it might not be too great at the start, but maybe after some people experiment with it, they can find a decent spot for it. It, it is certainly a super powerful effect, and if you can combo it with like stealth or some way to keep it alive in a big way, it will be an extremely powerful uh, card in almost any deck. And then we have the Anubisat Sentinel, 5 mana 4-4, four, four, Death Rattle, give a random friendly minion, plus 3, plus 3. Uh, that seems okay. Generally, when it comes to Hearthstone, when you have the, the mid-range type of stuff, it doesn't really matter that you give attack to things unless you're playing in aggressive fashion. And I don't think this card is good enough to qualify as an aggressive card. And giving 3 attack is kind of useless, so it's not really that much of a death rattle. It's, it's an okay for a five drop. I think it's going to be a terrific arena card, but that basically means that it's just balanced for constructed. Then we have Ancient Shade, four mana, seven, four, and the battle cries to summon an Ancient Curse into your deck that, uh, when drawn, deals seven damage to you, which seems really bad, but if you're playing like a face deck, um, maybe this card will see some play. If it's uncontested, if you play this on turn four, your opponent can't kill it, and you're playing face hunter, you just scored for seven, well, you definitely won that game. Okay, not definitely, but in most cases, you won that game. So it is something to consider. Some aggressive decks will probably try this out, and I think there's a reasonable expectation that it might see a decent fit. Maybe even like a druid aggressive deck, it could see some play. Anything can happen. 10 mana paladin card, summon seven murlocs that die this game. Um, this card like blows my mind in a bad way. It's like spectacularly bad. It, it seems so amazingly disastrous that um, the fact that it's actually a card that went through the design process and made it to actually be a card in the Hearthstone game, there's probably something I don't really understand about it. So um, probably the card is pretty good. Otherwise, they just wouldn't have made it, right? Right? Okay. 
Uh, Arc Thief Rafam, 9 mana, 7, 8. Basically, anything that costs 9 mana needs to be absolutely insane. It has a battle cry to discover a powerful artifact. Discover is the new keyword in the expansion. It basically gives you like a tracking ability where it gives you three options, and the options, uh, unless they're like a special ability, which is the case in this one, um, if it's like, you know, gives you a creature or a minion or a card, it will only give you a card, I've been told, of that are open to that class. So, um, for instance, if, if this was discover uh, a minion, and it was like a mage card, it would give you neutral cards or mage cards that were minions uh, as random options of the three. Now, the discover mechanic in general is, is an RNG thing, but it's an RNG thing that you can manipulate and you have interesting decision making. So it's kind of like a good random effect for the game. Random is good for Hearthstone because it gives players who aren't very good some chance to beat much better players in some situations. It's really fun to see the extreme ends of one player getting absolutely destroyed by the RNGs. Um, so as long as it's somewhat competitive and has some strategic element, I think RNG is good. I think they implemented the discover mechanic with this in mind. So overall, the discover mechanic is great but this card is not um, the powerful artifacts are actually pretty horrible all of them cost 10 uh, one of them uh, just is like 10 damage worth of random one damage hits so it's like a big terrible arcane missiles um, the other fills your board with three three minions which I don't know it seems horrible and the last one is plus 10 plus 10 on a creature it's a buff so that's basically like do 10 damage if you have an attacking creature. And that one's actually pretty good. But is it worth 9 mana, 7, 8 worth of card to play the previous turn? No. Next up is Bran Bronzebeard. 3 mana, 2, 4. And your battle cries trigger twice. Now this is uh, similar to the Baron Rivendare. It seems like the card wouldn't stack with itself. So if somehow you got two Bran Bronzebeards in play, it wouldn't trigger 3 or 4 or 5 times, of course. It, it'll just still be twice. So, you know, don't don't have your imagination wander off too much with that, but it's still pretty interesting. Uh, what's interesting to note is that you don't get to assess new targets for your battle cry. So if you have like a battle cry that deals three damage, it basically deals three damage to the same thing that you target an additional time afterwards. Some most action, most battle cries are pretty horrible uh, when it comes to using them twice. They just don't do anything or they're literally bad, but some of them can be pretty good. A lot of the joust effects are pretty good. A lot of the buff effects are pretty strong because they can trigger twice. For instance, you can play Bran, Bran Bronzebeard and drop like a Twilight Drake and a Twilight Drake, you know, might basically gain seven health from your hand, but it'll gain seven health twice from your hand. So it'll be 15 health in the end instead of eight. So there's some pretty cool stuff like that. Uh, I think it makes a lot of mid-range uh, battle cry minions pretty powerful. It's hard to say if this card will be really, really powerful, but it's really, really fun. Um, this is probably one of my favorite cards in the set because of that. Um, I think this will open up some possibilities with mill decks as um, it should work very well with a card like Cold Light Oracle. Usually you play Cold Light Oracle with another Cold Light Oracle. And if you play Brand's, Brand Bronzebeard and then you play a Cold Light Oracle, it's as if you play two Cold Light Oracles except you have a bigger body and you still have your third Cold Light Oracle. Or better yet, you can play Bran and then play two Cold Light Oracles for the ultimate mill. And uh, yeah, that deck probably won't work because everything's aggressive these days, but maybe it will, we'll see. Then we have Curse of Rafam. Two mana Warlock spell, give your opponent a cursed card while they wholly take two damage on their turn. So basically, it's two damage to face, but this generates no actual tempo. And if it's a tempo game, they'll never actually play the, the card that costs two mana to stop taking damage. Because if they just take two damage, but they're winning tempo-wise on the board, they're still going to win. It doesn't do enough damage. Card just seems kind of bad. But, you know, if there is like a faced spell type of Warlock deck, kind of like Malagos lock, maybe... Doesn't really work in that deck either, but maybe something can work, I guess. I don't know. Um, I'd imagine if uh, you play this, your opponent doesn't get rid of it, then you can play like a spell damage minion and do more damage at the start of their turn. You know, maybe there's something to it, but I don't see it right now. Wow. This is a warrior weapon if you were curious. Yes, it does suck. You were right. Dark Peddler, uh, Warlock Minion, 2 mana, 2-2, two, two, and the Battle Cries to discover a 1-cost card. 1-cost uh, card will be all the neutral 1-drop uh, minions, because there are no neutral spells, and it'll be all the Warlock 1-cost minions and the Warlock 1-cost spells. Um, so the expected result is pretty decent. Um, 
I don't think it's particularly a good card, but it's not horrible. Like it's gonna be a pretty fun pick in arena, but it's just it just doesn't have that like overpowered feel for constructed. So yeah, cool card. Uh, you might get some really nice discoveries with like maybe zombie chows or like flame imps, but overall I think the expected result is not that great. So just not powerful enough. Then we have Dart Trap, a new hunter trap, new hunter secret. Of course it's two mana and the secret is when an opposing hero power is used, deal five damage to a random enemy. Um, I think the inconsistency is going to hurt the card a lot, especially if a lot of people are playing aggressive decks. You'd want to play this in an aggressive deck, and use your aggressive decks have a lot of minions. So if this triggers on a minion, it kind of sucks. Yeah, you might as well be playing other secrets in that case. But again, it's not, it's like still a pretty okay card. So maybe we'll have some fun epic moments. Maybe we'll have a little bit of an increase in power in Arena. Entomb. This is one of the favorites of the set. It is a priest spell. And you choose a minion and you shuffle it into your deck. Uh, I guess you can shuffle your own minion if you want. Oh, no, you can't. It's an enemy minion. Okay, so it, it's basically recycle, except instead of putting it into your opponent's deck, you put it into your deck. So the reason this card is really strong is if you're playing control versus control and you're playing priest um, and there's not that many cards in the deck, your opponent plays a big minion, it's like you silence and destroy their minion and you add it to your deck and if both decks don't have too many cards it helps you them into fatigue game you basically destroy a high power minion and you gain it yourself it's over two turns so it has kind of the effect of mind control would but because it's six mana you can play more stuff so it's, it's really advantageous it's really on the power level of mind control which is too slow to see play right now but isn't necessarily too slow to ever see play. Um, so yeah, I think people will try it. People might like it. The priest deck might work with it, um, but I think it might take some time. It might take the meta uh, a forced slowdown for uh, this card to actually see widespread play, but overall very interesting, very cool, and I hope it does see some play soon. Elise Star Seeker. Four mana, three, five, and the battle cries to shuffle a map up to the golden monkey in your deck. I believe the map is a two mana cost card that when you play it shuffles a golden monkey into your deck. And the golden monkey is a four mana, I believe six, six taunt minion. And when you play, it turns every single card in your hand and deck into a legendary minion. Yeah, it's like mind blowing, but it just seems so unlikely that will ever actually make a difference. It's kind of hard to just draw one specific card in your deck. Often, you know, you just draw through your whole deck until you get the card you want. And if that happens to be the case, well, the gold monkey is not really going to do much of anything. So it's very difficult to really um, get use out of this card, but it is a four mana three five with a cool effect. So I think just a bunch of people will get this legend. It'll be, ah, it looks pretty cool. I'll give it a try. And uh, yeah, it seems like a fun legendary to try. It just seems that the consistency is going to be particularly horrible. Uh, changing your whole deck into legendaries has quite a bit of value because, well, most legendaries are big things that do a lot of stuff. And uh, later in the game, and probably you have to draw two specific cards, two specific individual cards from your deck to actually make this work, you're definitely getting this in the late game. You're definitely going to get that gold monkey down when uh, you have 10 mana crystals. So you're going to play these cards. Every single one that you draw, you can probably play. But at the same time, there are some bad legendaries. You might get like clogged in hand. It still might not really improve that situation of the game. You still might lose because you don't have exactly the specific cards you need in terms of removal, tempo, and higher quality legendary minions. So, yeah, it's not going to see much play, I don't think. Jin of the Zephyrs, 5 mana, 4, 6. It's pretty good stats. Whenever you cast a spell on a friendly minion, cast a copy of it on this one. So this has kind of the issue that the Valkyries have. Uh, Valkyries are super powerful minions, but they require to be targeted by your own spells. But it just turns out those cards are just not so good. So um, you need another minion, and you need to cast it on the other minion, and it gets a copy on this one. And the stats are pretty good, but are they good enough? Is this card overpowered enough? Not exactly, but I feel there's there's this type of card that really benefits from buffs um, that we were kind of slowly getting there. Um, maybe some kind of priest deck, maybe some kind of druid deck. Those are the class that have most of the buffs right now. 
we might see something come up from uh, that that type of deck, I suppose. So this is a nice addition. I don't think we're quite there yet, but I do think eventually we'll see some card, uh, some some play from this card. Desert Camel, three mana, two four Beast Hunter card. Battlecry puts a one cost minion from each deck into the battlefield. Uh, that's pretty good. You know, not all decks run one mana cost minions. In fact. Not too many of them do, mostly aggressive ones. And, uh, well, if you have the initiative when you play this card, maybe you can get a good trade on your opponent's one one mana cost minion. So it makes it so this card has quite a lot of presence in the game. Uh, a three mana beast with four health is pretty good as well, uh, largely because on four mana you can play a card like Houndmaster. And Houndmaster, because it gives you enough attack with the plus two attack, you're just looking for a high health target to put it on. And Desert Camel is a pretty high health target. Um, I don't quite think it'll make the uh, like aggressive hunter list, like the face hunter, but I feel like Desert Camel might see some trials in the mid-range hunter, maybe in the hybrid hunter, but those lists have to be so refined that uh, any card, even if it looks really good, which this one does look pretty good, uh, is going to have uh, some trouble staying in that archetype just because it's so competitive for aggressive high power minions. And we have Eerie Statue, 4 mana, 7-7, seven, seven, can't attack unless it's the only minion in the battlefield. That means your opponent has to have no minions, and you have to have no other minions, then this guy can attack. So basically, can't attack. That will never really ever happen. Um, it's, it's literally an Ancient Watcher. Uh, Ancient Watcher is a good card. This is a much bigger version of it, but proportionally to the mana cost, especially considering that for Ancient Watcher-like cards, it's more important to have high health. Uh, then attack because you're mostly going to use them as taunt activators. You're really comparing four mana for seven health versus two mana for five health. So it just feels like a worse ancient watcher. So yeah, not so great. Excavated evil priest board clear three damage to all minions. Shuffle this card into your opponent's deck. Uh, this card is just at least one mana too expensive to really see play. Priest has a lot of board clears. They all kind of suck. This also sucks so i guess it's in line with that but i don't really see why you would play this over basically all of the other ones explorer's hat uh, a very interesting mechanic uh it's a two mana hunter card gives a minion plus one plus one and the death rattles to add an explorer's hat to your hand and uh, well i guess you can have two explorer hats and i guess you can play like feign death to trigger death rattles so you can have a crap load of explorer hats going around but at the end of the day uh, paying two mana to give one minion plus one plus one isn't really worth it tempo wise and hunters don't really care about value so much so if this card looks good to you it might be pretty good in some situations uh, it might actually be pretty fun to play this with the the Ada sisters and that new Jin card that copies stuff you can have hats for everyone but uh, I think that's a little bit optimistic for the hunter deck Fierce Monkey, 3 mana, 3, 4 taunt, and it's a beast, and it's a warrior card, and it's a common. Wow. Looks like warriors are getting ever so slightly better when it comes to arena. In terms of constructed, it's still actually not too bad. It's a taunt minion. It has 4 health. Uh, you can play it on turn 3. Warriors, especially controllers, are really lacking 3 drops. Actually, the more I look at this card, the more I think it might see some play in constructed, which kind of shocks me a little bit, but yeah. This might see some play in Constructed. Uh, so, great card. Ethereal Conjurer, Mage, 5 mana, 6, 3 minion. Uh, pretty horrific distribution of stats. Um, Battlecry, Discover a Spell. Uh, again, because there are no neutral spells and because it's class restrictive, you're basically going to get an option of three random mage spells. And mage spells, they're generally pretty strong. Uh, the average mage spells actually at a very high power level, especially if you need, just need like some, some direct damage to close out the game. There's a good chance you're going to get that. So uh, the Battlecry is actually very good. I think the Battlecry is better than draw a card in most cases because you're most likely to draw direct damage, which in the later stages of the game, you'd want over just some random early drop minion. So the battle cry is slightly better than draw a card, but I feel the stat distribution just makes it slightly worse than Azure Drake. And would you run Azure Drake and Ethereal Conjure? You would not. So not so great. Every fin is awesome. Seven mana shaman card. Give me minus plus two plus two. Cost one less for each Murloc you control. 
Yeah, I guess Blizzard really wants Shamans to play Murlocs. Um, I'll try it. Uh, I think this card is pretty good. Uh, it buffs, of course, all of your minions, even the non-Murlocs. The Murlocs just give you a little bit of a discount. People have tried Bloodlust recently, specifically in Murloc decks, and obviously in Murloc decks this is considerably better than Bloodlust, so uh, I don't I don't see Murloc Shaman being like a competitive deck, but like it'll be like a pretty decent C or B tier deck, something like that. You know, not not too great, but a lot of fun. So look forward to this card uh, in that deck. Gorilla bought a 3-4 mana 3-4 mech and the battle cry if you control another mech, you discover uh, another mech. Uh, now discover means you get three mech options, you get to pick one. Um, if it's the early game, if you need to squeeze in like a curve, you might pick a small mech. If you want like a bigger card, there are some big mechs out there. Of course, you're only going to get neutral options. Most of the neutral mechs are a little bit less powerful than the class mechs, but they're still pretty damn powerful. Though for 4 mana, 3, 4 worth of stats is pretty bad, needing a mech in play to trigger. It seems like you'd never play 2 of this card. It seems like you might not play even 1 of this card, but it's not it's not like horribly unplayable, that kind of level. It just seems like a pretty mediocre card. Um, there's a lot of mech synergy out there, so it wouldn't surprise me to see this card, but um, I think it just caps out at 1. I don't think you'll ever want 2 of this card in your deck. Fossilized Devil Sore, 8 mana, 8-8, eight, eight, and if you have a beast, you gain Taunt. So if you have a beast, it's as good as Ironbark Protector, which sucks. Goodbye. Alright, Forgotten Torch. This is actually a really cool card. It's a 3 mana mage spell that does 3 damage, and you shuffle a Roaring Torch in your deck that does 6 damage. The Roaring Torch costs six man, uh, so it costs 3 mana, so it's, it's better than a Fireball, uh, and you kind of get more card efficiency out of your deck, and you get the burn damage. Um, I actually think this card might replace Fireball in the Freeze Mage style decks, and that might trickle on to the Control style Mage decks, because usually in the early game, you don't really have much to play on 3 mana, doing 3 damage for 3 is usually acceptable, it's just going to kill something, and just having an extra card in your deck that does damage is really nice. Um, I feel that tempo-wise, it's a bit too weak for the tempo mage, but again, you get the spell, more spells and stuff, and more reach. Um, so, I don't know. I kind of doubt that'll make the aggressive lists, but, you know, it's kind of hard to count it up because it is a pretty nice card. Jeweled Scarer, 2 mana, 1, 1, a battle cry, discover a 3 cost card, so you're basically guaranteed to play on curve, but your 2 drops sucked, even though it's a beast. Its stats are horrible, so I don't see this card seeing play right now. The You're really just playing the stack game. You're playing how much stats can I play for the small amount of mana, and this card doesn't really satisfy that goal very well. Huge Toad, 2 mana, 3, 2, Beast. Death Rattle, deal 1 damage to a random enemy. Uh, not too bad. Uh, it's pretty good because it has the 3 damage reach. I kind of prefer that, especially in aggressive decks, which is what we're seeing these days. It's a beast, some potential synergy there, and the 1 extra damage can clear another aggressive minion that your opponent has played. Uh, great card in Arena. Um, you know, as a hunter you want beasts, as a druid you want beasts, and uh, it's just a just great 2-drop on top of that. So really nice stuff for Arena, and might see some constructed play, but we're looking on the same level as like Flame Juggler. It's not going to be like overwhelming in every deck or anything like that. Keeper of Uldaman, 4 mana, 3, 4 Paladin card. Battle Cry set a minion's attack and health to 3. That's not a transform effect, it's just you, you change the stats of a minion. Uh, that can be really good if they have a very big minion, you can use it to... Uh, reach and kill their big minion with your small minion. If you have like a 1-1 one, one guy, you can set the attack and health to 3. If you have small death rattle activator minions like Nerubian Egg, you can set the attack and health to 3, which is really powerful. Um, the main issue with this card is that it is a Paladin-only card, and Paladins have a lot of very powerful 4-drops already, and right now the Paladin decks want to be more aggressive than playing 4-drops. Actually, the Paladin decks these days that actually work have Fairly few 4-drops, uh, so yeah, I think it's just a little bit out of place, but it is still a strong card, but I don't believe it's a strong enough card to create like a new archetype or anything like that. Murloc Tinyfin. Oh my god, Power Creep. Way, way better than Wisp. 
Uh, and technically it kind of is because the Murloc tag is probably the most expensive tribal tag when it comes to budgeting a card. So putting it on basically a card that are, exists like Wisp is pretty good. Um, Murlocs are just cards that you want to dish out on the board as fast and in the highest number as you possibly can. So um, yeah, I think it might see some play in some Murloc decks. I think it's a cool card. Um, I think uh, it makes Murloc Knight a little bit worse because the expected result can include this card, but it makes a card like Neptulon probably a little bit better because in the turn after uh, playing Neptulon, you can have a higher chance of offloading your entire hand and getting a little bit more tempo than you otherwise might with this card in the game. Mounted Raptor, Druid only, 3 mana, 3, 2, Beast, Death Rattle, Summon a random 1 cost minion. So it's basically piloted Shredder, which is ridiculously overpowered. Stepped down, 1 mana cost, Druid only, and Beast. Druid only, Druid's actually really needed good 3 drops, um, so this is a big addition to them. Uh, having more Beasts might help the Beast Druid a little bit, but I don't think this is enough. I think we still need more things added to that before it's any good. Um, yeah, I think it's a really good card. Um, it might see some play. I think a lot of druids will still prefer to play like the shades. You still don't want too many three drops in a druid deck because whenever you have a ramp, you're basically skipping your third turn anyway. But it's budget it's budgeted right, you know. For minions that death rattle and spawn other minions, you want those to have as high attack as possible. So uh, this is in my opinion, quite a bit better than Harvest Golem, and we've seen Harvest Golem played in Druid List before, so it's really quite a fine card, um, quite good in Arena as well. Jungle Moonkin, uh, I am pretty excited about this card. It's a four mana, four, four beast as well, and both players have spell damage plus two. The, the interesting part about this card is that Druid spells are really the ones that have the highest impact. They really benefit the most from spell damage like i think swipe benefits the most from spell damage out of any other spell in the game then you have like moonfire which you might actually play if you have this card uh wrath super powerful with spell damage starfall super powerful with spell damage so like you have all these spells that benefit so much from spell damage so even though you might be giving your opponent some crazy amount of spell damage which you don't normally want to give him if you save this card for the right situation to clear a spectacular board, I think it might warrant some spot in more of a control style druid. But before we see that, we'll probably need to see some nerf to the Force of Nature Savage Roar combo, which, well, it hasn't happened in two years. So, yeah, we'll see about that one. Museum Curator, Priest card, 2 mana, 1, 2, Battle card discovers a Death Rattle card. Most Death Rattle cards are super powerful, but this card is not. This is a 1 attack minion that doesn't have that much health for 2 mana, which will literally die to everything. So the body is just not good enough. Priest struggles for tempo. It'll struggle continuously if you spend 2 mana playing this card over really any other 2 drop. Raven Idol. This is a druid-only card. One mana and choose one. Discover a minion or discover a spell. So if you choose discover a minion, you'll get the option of three random minions that are druid or neutral. If you discover a spell, you'll basically get a choice between three druid spells. Now, there are a lot of druid spells that completely suck, so you need to keep that in mind. But what's interesting is that um, you can kind of scale this throughout the game. You basically pick out what you need. Um, you know, if, if you need a minion and you just pick minion, if it's still the early game, you play this on turn one and you need like a two drop or a three drop, you know, that's what you can kind of try to get. Um, and, you know, if you like need a board clear, if you're going to lose unless you have like the specific spell, you can try to search for that. If it's later in the game, you just pick the biggest minion you get from your minion options. So I feel this is an extremely good arena card. Um, and I think it might be good enough to see some constructed play. Uh, has some synergy with Violet Teacher. You can double dip on spells, and you might be able to double dip on spells in a short time period. So, you know, a lot of really cool interactions. Really like the card. Uh, it might not be good enough tempo for constructed, but I really hope that it is. A Reliquary Seeker, Warlock, one drop. Uh, of course, it's pretty horrible. If you have six other minions, it becomes a 5-5. Five -five. So if you get a really good implosion, you can play this card, but don't count on that one. 
Obsidian Destroyer Warrior Common again, 7 mana 7-7 seven, seven. at the end of your turn, summon a 1-1 one, one Scarab with Taunt. So you basically get that regardless because your opponent can't really act to you playing a creature. So you're basically getting a 7-7 seven, seven and a 1-1 one, one Taunt for 7, and it's a common. So basically Warriors get another good tool for Arena. Still a long way to go though, Blizzard, still a long way to go, but I'm really appreciating the effort that you guys are doing with this stuff. So great arena card. In Constructed, there's a card called Big Game Hunter. Big Game Hunter will probably prevent cards like these from seeing much play, but maybe it's good enough. The reason, uh, my point is if, if it is really good enough, then people will play it, and then people will play Big Game Hunters again. It's just it's just such a ridiculous counter to big minions like this one that they will never be out of control. They might be just good. That's it. Just good. At most. Naga Sea Witch, 5 mana, 5, 5. Your, cost, your cards cost 5. Um, I think th this the opinions on this card is actually pretty mixed. A lot of people hate it. But I think, I think they're right. I think this card can screw you over. But in general, in general, guys... Um, Five drops in this game are really bad, so the Naga Sea Witch is just a pretty decent five drop. And, you know, if you're playing, like, Control Warrior, your opponent might be really scared of you playing, like, a big legendary minion that would other cost, otherwise cost, like, seven, eight, nine, maybe ten mana on your next turn. So it might be, like, one of those must-kill type of cards. Uh, it also might see a, a tempo play in the late game. So if you have, like, a seven, eight, or nine drop card, you can just play this with it. So you play this first, then you play, like, a nine drop minion. And what ends up happening is you basically get, like, a five, five creature for one, two, three, maybe four mana. And in all of those cases, that's really good. So um, I see this card seeing... Uh, a, a fairly effective play in a lot of the control decks, particularly Control Warrior, but it's hard to see if there's really a spot for it. It's going to take a lot of trial and error, but I hope it succeeds. Pit Snake, row card, 1 mana, 2, 1 beast, destroy any minion damaged by this minion. It's got like the poison effect, pretty cool stuff. Uh, might see some play, but I kind of doubt it. Uh, we put the poison stuff on a few of the cards. It's just 1 mana, 2, 1 is pretty good, but if you want to be aggressive, I think there's more aggressive cards out there. So it's good, just feels it's not really good enough. But um, who knows? Almost every aggressive card ever made has been played in some way or another. Reno Jackson, 6 mana, 4, 6. Battle cry if your deck contains no more than one of any card, fully heal your hero. Uh, really cool concept, really cool card. Um, kind of hoping we'll see some play in like a, a hand lock with demons and maybe like dragons kind of like I've been playing I feel like I can make that deck work with one ofs uh, but I don't know if it's really worth it to do that just to put this card in here I was hoping this card will cost five mana I actually thought it did cost five mana but then they released it and it cost six mana so mm, it's not really a good enough creature to play by itself I feel it would be a good enough creature to play by itself if it was five mana but it's not so that's a little bit of a disappointment very cool effect though Rumbling Elemental, 4 mana, 2, 6, Shaman card. After you play a Battle Crime, deal 2 damage to a random enemy. I feel this card is actually pretty good as long as people are playing a lot of aggressive decks, which they are right now, because uh, often 2 attack is just good enough. If your opponent's playing like a face deck, 2 damage is good enough for every single creature in his deck. Uh, and having 6 health on a 4 drop is just really great. And if you can play Battle Cry minions, which there are a lot of those in Shaman, uh, you might be able to snipe off a few targets. So um, this card will really, really mess with aggressive decks. And Shaman has a few tools to do that already. So if the aggressive thing keeps continuing, check out this card. Give it a try. Sir Finley Mergleton, 1 mana, 1, 3, pretty good stats, Murloc, mm, pretty nice tag, and Battle Card Discover, new basic hero power. Now, you generally make a deck that complements your hero power. The only exception to that is if your hero power sucks. So if you're playing Shaman, that's pretty good. I mean, they already encourage Shaman to play Murlocs. If you play this on turn one and you're playing Murloc, you're trying to play an aggressive deck, totems are not really aggressive. So that's good because if you discover a new basic hero power, you have three options. I don't know if you can get Shaman again, even though you're Shaman, but if you can, you will get two options that are not Shaman. So if you're a Shaman and you have two options to get a non-Shaman hero power, I'd say that's a pretty nice thing. So yeah, check it out. Give it a try in your Murloc Shaman decks. 
Five mana Summoning Stone, 0-6 when you cast a spell, summon a random minion of the same cost. They had a Tavern Brawl with this stuff. It was pretty cool. You had to make a different, like a very different deck. And it still wasn't on that high of a power level compared to just regular constructed play. And you have to pay five mana for this piece of crap. So basically, I think they're just introducing terrible five drops because one day we might see an even bigger piloted shredder. Sacred Trial. Uh, secret. Paladin. Didn't know we needed more of those. It's kind of weird. When your opponent has at least three minions and plays another, destroy it. Uh, yeah, I'm actually surprised to see this card. It seems pretty good, but I didn't think that we needed better Paladin Secrets. The reason I think it's pretty good is because right now people are playing like uh, aggressive uh, Mysterious Challenger type secret Paladin decks already. And, you know, because of Noble Sacrifice, because uh, they still have very efficient removal and stuff, that deck really does not lose to, like, one or two big minions. It loses when they get, like, out Zerg on the board, which means that this card is going to trigger, and it's going to trigger usually on, like, turn, you know, three, four, five, something like that. So, yeah, or maybe after that. So it's, it might actually hit a pretty big minion. So it's a good card. I just didn't think they needed another good secret. So I'm a bit I'm a bit sad about that one. Tomb Pillager, Rogue Card, 4 mana, 5, 4, Death Rattle, add a coin to your hand. Uh, which basically makes this like a 3 mana card for a 5, 4, which still isn't exactly good enough because you can't actually play it on turn 3. But it's cool, and it's definitely good enough for Arena. Tomb Spider, 4 mana, 3, 3, Beast, Battle Cry. Discover a beast. And again, the discover mechanic, uh, I believe, only works for the class that you're playing. So this is obviously quite a bit better if you're a hunter or a druid uh, in respect to the other classes that don't really have any class-specific beasts. Um, doesn't seem all that great, but uh, pretty decent in arena, perhaps, again. Unearthed Raptor. This is probably my favorite card of the set. Uh, it's kind of like a controly rogue card, and we've seen controly rogue cards be introduced exclusively for rogue cards in the last like three in the last like year or so. I feel like this card might just be enough. Uh, it, there just haven't been enough good control rogue cards, but this might be the tipping edge because this is really good. It's a three mana three four battle cry choose a friendly minion and gain a copy of its death rattle effect. So the dream is to play like a ruby and egg. Then you play this guy. When this guy dies, you get a four four. Um, if you have nothing before, it's still a three mana three four, which is amazing. And in the late game, if you're playing cards like Sylvanas, if even if you're playing Doctor Boom, you can just get like a boom bot effect. It's just so so strong in the late game. It's just awesome. It's an awesome awesome card. Um, it might be annoying to play against like a death rattle rogue, but I don't know. I would like to experience that. Oh, missed one. Wobbling runts, six mana, two six death rattle summon three two two runts. Kind of like the Savannah high main effect, but because it's only two attack, it doesn't pose an immediate threat. So. Your opponent's not going to kill it, so you have to kill this card by attacking. And because it has six health, you'll probably have to attack twice. So it's like play six mana to get garbage on the board. You get like three and a half mana worth of stats, and two turns later, you get three two two minions that are predictably on the board to get board cleared. It it might look good, but I really don't think that it is. And then Tunnel Trog, Shaman, one mana card, one three is good stats. Whenever you overload, you gain plus one attack per locked mana crystal. That's cool. Um, I feel like this card won't really work too well, though, unfortunately. It might be good enough to save this for when you play like a two overload or a three overload type of card or turn in the later stages of the game, just kind of like tempo out your opponent. But I don't feel it's good enough as a one drop. I feel like Zombie Chow is just way better than Shaman because you don't care if you heal your opponent. And there's not too many overload cards you want to play on turn two. And even out of those, they only have overload one. So it's still basically a Zombie Chow in the best case. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if you really want one drops, you'd play Zombie Chow and you'd play this. Maybe people will do that. 
And that concludes it, guys. So quite a set. I believe it's 45 cards. Uh, I'll do a more in-depth review after I really analyze maybe some of the synergies between the cards. But I mean, the expansion is coming out in like five days. So check it out, and we'll very quickly get to realize just how close my predictions are to, uh, you know, the reality. Hope you guys enjoyed my review. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And see you guys tomorrow.